Dear God, we thank you for you being Elohim, for you being Jehovah, for you being every unspoken word that we could gather in our mind to, to explain how great a God you are. God, we, um, we come with different conditions, different ailments, different issues, different complaints, different praises, different, different things in our heart and our mind, Lord, asking that, God, that you separate the two um, so that we can focus on loving you and dedicating ourselves to you, consecrating ourselves day in and day out so that you can get the absolute best of us. So, God, we, we come asking for forgiveness for um, not returning the very same fables that you blessed on us, even if we don't have the same capacity that you do. But, Lord, we, we have enough sense to say thank you. Um, so, God, we ask for forgiveness, Master, when we overlook um, the very things that you do for us, like sight, like vision, like breath, like feelings, um, like feet, like, um, like walking, all those things that we take for granted, God, we ask that you forgive us now and teach us, Lord, how to walk in your perfect will at all times. God, we ask you to open up our minds that we may be able to receive the blessings that come forth falling from heaven in the, uh, the presence of your word um, that will be uh, illuminated in our mind today. God, we, we say thank you. We pray that you bless all those that are, all churches that are open in your name, Amen. that give you glory and give you praise for this is your day, God, and that you said that we should be um, Rejoice and be glad in it. So, Lord, we honor you, we bless you, we exalt your holy name. It's in the magnificent, marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Let the entire church say amen. 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 We are working in um, a series. Last week we said, and we'll recap, last week we dealt with the vision of um, lenders, not borrowers, the entrepreneurial spirit. Today we'll talk about the plan, the blueprint, or the, um, the outline. The roadmap. We'll deal with that today. Our background, or our main text, came from Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, verse eight, and I'll read that for this. For this is what we will construct our our lesson on. Outside of this, but we'll build it from Genesis, Deuteronomy twenty-eight, and verse. The focus verse is number twelve, and it said, "The Lord will open for you His good storehouse, the heavens." to give rains to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand and you shall lend to many nations but you shall not borrow. So that's our series, Lend and Not Borrow, the Entrepreneurial Spirit. But we're going to work out of Genesis today. Last week we saw the vision um, that God had in Genesis 1 um, when he saw that there was uh, the earth was dark and needed some illumination, so we worked out a vision. This week, we're going to talk about um, the plan, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, um, first book. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish, over the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand uh, forever. You may be seated. Uh, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Let them rule over the fish and the sea of the birds in the sky and over all the cattle and over everything over the earth. And let every creeping thing and, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Last week was um, the beginning of this series, for God has given all of us a vision, um, given us all a passion. God's given us all dreams and desires of becoming not only our own individuals, but becoming um, entrepreneurs, um, builders of God's kingdoms and builders of opportunities around us. A, a, a poet wrote a verse, and he said that, an entrepreneur makes more, entrepre makes more opportunities than he finds. He makes more, more opportunities than he finds. The difference between a sole proprietor and an entrepreneur is the sole proprietor normally, if the business has a small business, the business may consist of one person, it may consist of a few people, but is small. The sole proprietor, the owner of the business, usually has a very vital portion in that business. If they are out, uh, 
there is a lack in the business where it doesn't go forth as it should. A sole proprietor usually doesn't have the ability to walk away and business continues to go. A corporation um, has intricate people in place that the owner, the CEO, the founder can take months off and the business still continues to grow. A uh, sole proprietor, you take a month off, you're bound not to eat. Uh, a corporation, you take a, you take a year off, you, you're going to make more if you take a year off than you would if you went in the office because you have people built around you. So God is saying um, that when he gave us visions, he gave us the entrepreneurial spirit within us. And then he's telling us that is, as he is, as we said last week, as he is the, um, the architect, the engineer, and the general contractor, so are we because we are made in his image. Um, so as that lingers and lives inside of us, uh, we ought to follow the same pattern, the same degree of success that God did in order for the dreams, the visions that God gives us, gives us for them to thrive and to live so that we become not just sole proprietors, but we become corporations so that we can take months and years off. And the corporation not only does it swell, but it grows. And not only will it grow, um, it, 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 it produces things that we can be a kingdom producers so we can be lenders. And not borrowers. Um, David said that I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous um, forsaken. Uh, so, so that we can be the righteous, so that we can um, do the thing that the righteous people of God are supposed to do. So that our faith is, is in a position where it doesn't make a difference what our condition is. Our faith still says what God says that I, that I am. Um, we have to get in the habit of uh, producing uh, our vocabulary to, um, to, to, to include uh, things of um, the future tense and not necessarily my present tense. We have to speak things that, that I am because God says that I am, um, that, that I'm not going to be this because God already promised me this, that I'm powerful that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, that I'm not the, not the tail, but I am the head, that, that, that God knows my, my, my beginning, my end, and my middle, um, that I am a, um, I am a, 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 a conqueror, um, that I'm more than what, what you see, that there is a lot in me that I have not brought out. So we have to get in the, the habit of proclaiming um, positive attributes about us, even if um, I'm broke, even if I'm on my last meal, even if I've got tape on my shoes, um, even if I don't have what my neighbor has, I have to speak the things to manifest those in my mind. God says that if I am, you are. And if you are, then I am. So you have to become what God is. So the entrepreneurial spirit in this particular chapter, um, we're talking about creating the plan. Talking about creating a plan. Proverbs verse. Um, Chapter 29, verse 18, um, says this. Where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. Which basically says, without guidance, uh, the folk will do anything that they please. Uh, without an outline, they'll run them up, they'll run astray. They'll do whatever it is their natural desires are to do, which is lust which is sin, which is everything that is the opposite of God because the natural desires, which are the flesh, take over the spirit. Paul says that when I try to do good, evil is always around me. He said that when my flesh desires to do, when my spirit desires to do it, my flesh wants to war against my spirit. So the natural man doesn't want to do the things of the spirit because it takes away of the natural condition of the man. It makes the man a woman not gender specific, but it makes the human um, feel as if they have no control. Uh, but God, on the other side of that, is when you release control to God, you gain more control for the man or the woman uh, when you get outside of trying to do it for yourself. So um, we need to write the vision. We need to write the vision. Whatever vision it is that God gave you, whether it's for business, um, whether it's the business of getting closer to God, uh, we need to have a game plan in order to make sure that that is successful. Um, writing or creating a plan in the business world, a business plan is the roadmap for your journey. What that does, it allows you to see the things that you will miss if you just go out and start to fish. It allows you to see all of the things that you can do if you um, take, take the time to pin out um, your objective. 
if God gave you the vision, let's say, to be a, um, a culinary chef, if I just go out and I just start cooking, I hadn't really identified the best opportunity for me to cook. I haven't uh, distinguished the, the difference between do I want to cook um, Hawaiian cuisine, do I want to do barbecue, uh, do I want to do gourmet, but I, I, I know I want to cook. And so right in my vision, vision, my vision plan, right in my blueprint says that I'm going to um, single out what I'm great at. And then when I determine what I'm great at, I'm going to start writing the passageway so that I become greater at that. So that I'm just not out just doing anything on everything because I have, I have the ability to it. So I'm going to be very specific, very specific about what I'm going to do because there is <clears throat> a lot of opportunity for the enemy to confuse us when we get out there in the world. So when I write my vision, when I'm writing my outline, when I'm writing my blueprint, when I'm writing my business plan, I'm going to write out what I believe it should be called. Because it can, if it lives to me, then I can make it live to you. So I'm going to write it out, and I'm going to call it. I'm going to say Trinity Tabernacle is what I'm going to call it. Okay. And when I write out Trinity Tabernacle, now Trinity Tabernacle has life. Amen. It's living. Now it's, it's come from out of my mind. It's gone onto paper, and now it's real. I can print it, I can send it, I can show you what it is, what I'm working towards. So I'm going to write out Trinity Tabernacle. Then I'm going to write out everything that I want, everything that I've heard God says that Trinity Tabernacle is supposed to do, and that becomes my plan. Amen. So he is supposed to build ministry. In that ministry, he's supposed to be a deliverance ministry. In that deliverance ministry, he is supposed to help people be get rid of things that they have been lingering on in their past, things that have, pro have prohibited them to be, from becoming the man and the women that God had called them to Amen. do. In that, we will deliver folk from sicknesses and illness and disease and from strife and from turmoil, all in my business plan because I'm writing it out because I just don't want to be just any other church. God has set the church aside, set the opportunity aside, set the business aside because he wants us to be unique. He wants us to be um, such a, uh, such a, a pillar um, that everybody around you will, will wonder, what did they do to be where they are? I want to be just like them, but they have no idea that all I did was listen uh, to God. So I'm writing out my business plan. I'm writing out the vision um, so that I can push, I can shoot holes in it. Because there are some things that other businesses do that will not be conducive uh, for this opportunity. Um, there are some traditions that other people do that will not benefit what God is calling you to do in your vision. So we have to be very uh, strategic in what God is calling us to do. Amen. So I'm writing out my road map my, 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 so that my journey, so that my journey will not have as many stumbling blocks in it because I'm preparing for it. I'm writing out the opportunities that I'm going to, that I want to do. I'm, I'm writing out the, the costs that may be associated with what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm writing out advertisement. I'm, I'm writing out who I want to be a part of this new foundation that God is starting to bring into fruition. I'm writing everything out so that when I start, I have something to go by. God gave us 66 books of a vision. Um, so that when we get out here started working in the vineyard, um, that we just won't just get out there and just do whatever somebody else is doing. We'll do what God told us to do because it's written in his word. Everything that we want from God is already written in his word. You want to see how to deal with different issues? Look in God's word. You want to see how God deals with thieves, uh, thieves and, and stealing and backbiting and rumors and lies? Look in God's word. You want to see how God constructs something from nothing? Look in God's word. Word, if you want to see how God teaches us how to forgive, look in God's word because he's trying to give, give us a leg up on everybody else. I, I don't care what the folks that don't believe in God are doing um, because I believe in God. They can do whatever they want to do, but I'm going to believe in God. And I'm going to do what God calls me to do. So if God um, decided um, to encourage men to record the things that God did, then I gotta have enough sense. If God is speaking to me and giving me a vision, I gotta record it myself. 
I got to take my pen and my paper out. I, I got to sit in front of my laptop and type as good as I can so I can get the vision, so I can bring the concept to reality, so that way I can hand it to you and say, this is where I'm going. I think you should come with me. This is the road that God has put me on. I, I, I think you would be, I think you would benefit from this. This is the opportunity that God has given me, and he wants you uh, to be a part of that. Amen. So I'm writing the vision. So we're writing the vision. Now when you look in this particular text, God wrote, he wrote the vision. Um, he wrote it very clean, but we wouldn't have seen it if we weren't looking for it because it just looks like God having a conversation. Um, but God is writing the vision. But I want to go back to the first time when we talked about, um, when we were writing the, the, the plan. But I want to talk about the vision because I, was, I saw something in it that I didn't see last week. And I want to bring it to you because it stirred up my spirit. Uh, the, in the second verse, in chapter 1 still, we're going to work in chapter 1. He said, the earth was formless and, the, and, formless and a void and the darkness was over the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Imagine uh, this entire earth uh, that the, the breath of God, the wind of God was hovering over the water. What does a parent do when the parent hovers over the child? The, the parent is protecting. The, the, the parent is nurturing. The, the parent is announcing to, to everything else that this one is mine. Amen. That everything over there you can touch, but this one right here Amen. is mine. And, and when I look in the text, when I look through the rest of these 66 books, I don't see God doing anything else like this. But the first time that he formed the world, that his spirit hovered over the water, said that this is mine. Uh, right. Devil, you may have took a third, but this is Mine. And when you get into the book of John, chapter 5, verse number 4, the Bible said that when the man was at the, 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 the pool called Bethesda, um, that, he, that the angels came and stirred up the waters. Said that he couldn't get in the waters because there was nobody to take him to get in the waters. But whenever somebody would get in, whatever ailments they had, they would be healed from uh, the same occurrence. So there is indefinitely something magnificent about water. I don't know what it is specifically, but if God had enough uh, favor for us to hover over the waters, if, if, he, if, he had, if he thought about us enough to stir up the water so that every sick person, if you could get in it, you would be healed. If he thought about it enough of it to, um, to baptize Jesus in it and his voice came and said, this is my son whom I'm well pleased with, that there has to be something in the water other than it just being refreshing. God is always doing something with everything that he uses. So do not let folks tell you that because it's small, that God is not doing something in a small thing like water. We know that God used water. He, 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 he rebuked it and, and told it to, to roll back when he brought Moses over the Red Sea. So we know that God troubled the waters when, when Jonah was trying to run away from his assignment and he let the waters get and the wind get real uh, hectic. So we know that God has control with whatever he's doing. So there are some waters that are in your life that God is saying, let me move those waters around so that you can see how great I am because I'm the same God that hovered over the waters the first time before I made everything come into existence, um, before I made the creeping crawling, before I made the, the ground come up, before I put the stars in the air, before the night knew that it was night and day knew it was day, I hovered over the waters because it was the first thing yeah. that I created. We didn't see the text that said, and God created the waters. Out of Jesus, the Bible said, <laughs> when he was on the cross, it said that blood and water <laughs> came out of him. Uh, it's not a coincidence that we are made up of probably three-fourths of water. There is something magnificent Abound water. That's not the text, that's not the word today, but so I just have to give you that. So let's go back to verse number number 26, because I need you to see this. There's three things in here that we're gonna um, deal with. In verse number 26, then God said, Let us uh, make man in our image. Uh, first thing in building or constructing uh, the plan, the roadmap, the blueprint, 
um, to the vision that God has given you is uh, we need to figure out who's going to collaborate with us on the project. Uh, secondly, we need to um, look at the qualities of the project. And then lastly, we look, need to look at the roles and the responsibilities of what we produce. Amen? Amen. So who will collaborate with us on the project? God said in verse number 28, he said, uh, I'm sorry, verse number 26, then God said, let us make man. Um, God is dealing with um, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. God has, has um, given out his vision. He's writing out the blueprint, and he's saying um, that in this particular assignment, in this particular job, I need you three, you two, uh, to come in and do this particular thing because I'm going to pull some of you out of it, I'm going to pull some of them out of it, I'm going to pull some of this out of it, and we're going to put this together in what I'm going to call man. So, so, so you and I, are we're going to become business partners in this venture in creating um, the, my very prized possession that I'm going to put on the earth, which is man. Uh, when you start to create your own business plan, your project, or your vision, writing out your vision board, um, there are going to be people that God is going to place in your mind um, on who would be good for certain positions or certain opportunities or to help you get um, to, to where God says that you should be. So it's important that the beginning of your, uh, your, your, your success planning includes people that will help you get to where God says that you need to be. Now, they may not stay with you on the journey. Sometimes folks are just seed builders. They just come plant a seed, and God waters it, and then they go on. Some folks are there for the duration. They come in and actually cultivate and crop the seed and cut it out and help put it in barns. Some folks are the folks that come and take the seeds that have been cut, cropped, cultivated from the barns into the storehouse. Some folks take the, the, the been cut, crop, cultivated from the storehouse and bring it out and we take it and we sell it. So there are different people for different functions um, that your vision will produce. God asked the Holy Ghost and Jesus, he said, let us, let us come together and we're going to form um, mankind. We're going to make mankind. Then he didn't stop there. He says, but. We have to do something about mankind. So verse number, that same verse in the B clause, he said, let us make man in our image according to our likenesses. Um, these are the, uh, some of the qualities that man will possess. When, now, when we are, we are a, a um, we are a generation um, that is selfie uh, infatuated. Everybody and their mama take selfies. I don't, I don't care how old you are, how young you are. I don't care if you got a flip phone, if you got a new iPhone. I don't care what you are. Everybody takes selfies. So whenever you take a selfie, you hold it up. And when you look at it, that is an image of you. Amen. It's not you. It's an image of you. Um, it resembles you, but it's not you. Um, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likenesses. In every twin, they are they are identical. There is a flaw that separates one twin from another. Even if they look identical, there is something interestingly different about the twin. You're just going to have to look for it. Mm -hmm. On every job, even though the people have the same job title, there is something particularly different about their job that isn't like your job. So even things that mirror one another do not have the same capacity or propensity. Um, so God says that as I make them in my image, um, they won't have the same ability as me as God, but they will carry some of the fruits of the Spirit because they come from me. Um, they, they may not be able to stand out and say, let there be light, but they'll have the ability to ask me, God, will, will you create light? Will you create opportunity? God, will you bring something from nothing because I'm made in your image? So as he's collaborating with uh, the Father, with the Son, and the Holy Ghost, he's saying that I'm going to make them look like us. They'll have our shape. Um, they'll have our stance. They'll, they'll have our, our courage. They'll, they'll, they'll have our, our, um, our tenacity. They'll, they'll have our strength. They'll, they'll have our peace. They'll have our love. They'll have our long suffering. They'll, they'll have our joy. They'll have our kindness. They'll have all those things naturally in them because I'm going to create them out of pure love. 
people. They're, they're not going to be genetically implanted and created from what scientists are doing. These are going to be naturally the first of their kind. There will not be anything else like this. They will be the originals. They, can't, they won't be a cheap Chinese knockoff or duplicate. They will be the original men because they will look like me. When we look at our parents, we have resemblances of our parents, but we are not our parents. Yeah. Our children look like us, but they're not, they're, they are not us. They may have some same habits as we do as our parents, but we are not them. That's, God, that's why God created us, created us in such a way that we can develop our own personalities. Amen. They said, let us make man in our own image, Amen. in the image of God. When he constructed man, uh, when he makes the image, <laughs> there are pieces in the image that can't help but to become just like the Father. There are things in you that there's nothing that you can do about, but you're going to resemble that feature of your parent. No matter what you do to augment it, it will always be what it was. Amen. No matter what we do to separate ourselves from God, we will always be what we were created. The issue is that free will says that we don't have to acknowledge him as our father, as our God, as our creator, which brings on the issues, which brings on the problems, which brings on sin, which brings on illnesses, which brings on death. But we have um, the ability to say that's my dad. That's my daddy. And if he is my father, then whatever he is, that must be me. Whatever he can do, some of that I must be able to do. Whatever he can withstand, I must be able to withstand at least some of it because uh, we come from the same DNA. We have been intricately, the, his DNA has been woven into the fabric of mankind. He said, let us make man in our own image. And then lastly, the thing that God did in that he gave roles and responsibilities. When you're creating your business plan and dealing out and um, what it will do and what it won't do, um, you always have to include the responsibilities of it because there is no business uh, that can thrive if it doesn't have any responsibilities um, to humanity. Every business must have a responsibility uh, to protect and to guide humanity. Um, we can't be, give, can't be takers and never givers. So we always have to be in a position to lend. Um, so he said, I'm going to give it some responsibilities. When you look at that same verse, we're working in verse number 26. He says, uh, and let them rule over the fish over the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the earth. God gave Adam, gave what would be Adam. This is because this is dealing with the spiritual uh, composition of man, not the physical. Um, God gave them um, all the responsibilities that they would have, the roles that they would have when he decided to place them into the Garden of Eden, um, that they would have complete dominion over everything that God had created, even dominion over um, the angelic host that fell from heaven. God gave him them dominion over everything over the earth, everything over the earth. So that everything that we struggle with about, is that mine? God said, it is yours. <laughs> Even if, if you don't have your name on it, God says, it is yours because he gave you dominion over that. The, the things that the other cultures, <laughs> other cultures decide to make things theirs that don't belong to them. Um, they may not understand the godly text in it, but they understand the, 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 the uh, <laughs> value of ownership. Uh, so we have to understand not only the godly text in it, but also the value of ownership. Um, that if God says it's mine, it's mine. Amen. And that if it's mine, I'm going to protect it like it's mine. Amen. And I'm not going to let anybody come in and tell me that because it, it's not mine, that it's not mine. It's mine because God said it's 
right. mine. And it's mine because I can look in the text in Genesis 1 and 26 where God right. says that he gave me dominion over all of that anyway. And matter of fact, if you don't belong to him, I own you too. So you better move on right. if you really want God to be a blessing in you. If you don't want God to be angry with you. So we have to get our minds together and know that if God has constructed visions in us, that God is requiring that we take the vision that God gives us, no matter what it is, that we put it on paper so that the vision can start to live, so we can start to see it to come to fruition. Um, because I can't go to the bank with a, with, a, with a hand and tell them, this is what I want and ain't nothing in my hand. I have to go to the folks that are going to help me with Amen. the things that I need so they can see how beneficial doing business with me will be for you. Amen. God says, I'm going to write it out. Um, because I expect uh, for them to follow my lead. I expect for them to see that as I do, that they will do. As, as I lead, that they will lead. As I walk, that they will walk. As I run, they will run. As I swim, they will swim. As I sing, they will sing. As I am, they are. So he says that I'm going to write the vision. And then I'm going to write this blueprint out. I'm going to make a plan. I'm going to make an outline. I'm going to build a concept in so that you can take your conception into, bring it to fruition so that you can see the baby being birthed and it be alive and it grow and it, it's nurtured and it turns into something that you can be pleased about. And the only way you can do it is follow the blueprint that God has given us. God has always been making plans for us. He didn't stop making plans just because we stopped acting like he was our father. He kept on making plans for us. Jeremiah 29 and 11, God says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That was God's way of making a plan for you. And no matter what you did, God still always had. He was five steps in front of you, knowing that you'll never catch up. He was always ahead of you, trying to give you the benefit of the doubt that maybe one day you would get your stuff together and realize that the only reason you aren't where you are supposed to be is not because God stopped blessing. It's because you stopped listening to God. He said that I have plans, thoughts. I've been considering about you. I've been daydreaming about what my son, my servant, my daughter would be if they just open their eyes, open their ears, and just hear me speak in the wind, hear me command their body to do this and that, hear me to open up opportunities, hear me to open up the windows, hear me to bless them, protect them when they don't know that they're in danger. If What would happen to my son, my daughter, if they just really open and focus? And saw that I've been thinking about you every day, all day long. Yes. In my free time, I've been thinking about you. In my quiet time, I've been thinking about you. In my creative time, I've been yes. thinking about you. You have always yes. been in my every thought, Amen. in every breath. You're in that because I'm God. Mm. I have no limitations. I have no, um, there are no limits to, to the amount of things that I can do simultaneously because I am God. I work faster than you can think. I work faster than you can blink. I work faster than you can conceive a thought because I am God. What makes you think it's going to take me a month to do what I can do for you in 45 milliseconds before the complete thought comes out of your mind? You just have to trust me and do what I say. He says, write it out. He says, the only way that you're going to see it is you write it out. Because the devil wants you to con to be deceived mm. in what you're doing and do it without having a plan, uh -huh. without having a plan of attack, a plan uh -huh. of escape, and a plan of free safety. That's he right. wants you to be con he wants you to be delusional mm. while you're going through it because he does not want you to succeed. It is the enemy's job to deceive you, to yeah. get you off of course, yeah. uh, to make you think that you're yeah. by yourself, that God doesn't love you. And if God loved you, he would have gave you everything instead of you working yeah. for it. It's the enemy's job to, to, to make right. you think that the only reason that you're here is because of just coincidence. No, it's by divine yeah. providence yeah. that you are right where you are. So you have to take ownership of what God has given you and say, this is mine. It ain't nobody else's. It's mine. Yes. What God gave me is for me. Yes. And when he, when he gives it for me, then that, that means that I got everything in me to do what God gave yes. me. Yes. I don't have right. to wait on That's other right. opportunities. That's it's right. already there. He says, right. write it out and you'll see. That's right. <laughs> he said, write out that vision. Right. 
Write out that, that business plan. Yeah. You'll see that it was created for you and not the opposite way. Yeah. He said that he didn't make the Sabbath, um, um, he didn't make man for the Sabbath, he made the Sabbath for the man. It wasn't yeah. created that way. He said opportunities that you've been looking for, yeah. oh, they were created for you, not you for the opportunity. Yeah. Have your, have enough courage uh, to go back to the drawing board. Because there's some things that God has already called you to do. And you haven't done them because you've been waiting on God to show you more to do. God says, no, that's, that's it right there. There's nothing else to it. When you start writing it, you'll start seeing it unfold before you. Go back to the drawing board because there are some opportunities that you have left, left lingering around that God has been trying to give you for years, that God has been talking to you about months, that God has been disturbing your spirit about. Go back to the drawing board um, because God said that he already made you in his image after his likeness and he's already given you dominion over everything that's in your way. All you have to do is start writing. Amen. And when you get down to the last page, God will say, I'm going to get there. <laughs> it's all right. Down to the last page, God will say, I'm in the bees now. <laughs> Revelations 22, 21. Amen. Revelation 22, 21. Last verse. Amen. When you get down to amen for God means he is done. I agree. We work together well. Amen. Revelation 22. Last verse. Amen. So as you go and check your um, 